All right, so this is going to be kind of the first tutorial in the Bootstrap 2 series of, of uh, tutorials. And <clears throat> initial plan was to go over the whole initial set of tutorials in the Bootstrap 2 wiki. Uh, but really, I think we kind of want to take things a bit slower. So what we're going to go over in this first one is more or less how to load your data in from DFT calculations. And if you're following along with me using GPA, how to do those DFT calculations, I'll give you some pointers if we're using Quantum Espresso or if you're using Quantum Espresso, um, VASP, CP2K, whatever. But I won't go through exactly how to construct those input files. Uh, one thing I want to comment on is a lot of people, uh, including people in my group, even my advisor has run into this issue is when you Google Bootstrap 2, the first thing that comes up is not actually the standard release of Bootstrap 2. So what you want to type in is Bootstrap 2 GitLab. This you'll find the repo which is managed by Jesus uh, Carete Montagna. I don't know if I pronounced that exactly right, but um, that's his name. And he manages the official release of um, of Bootstrap 2. So we're going to click over to the wiki, go over to, in the future we'll cover things like using it as a library, that means using its Python functions um, for different purposes, adding support for a new DFT program. I'm interested in doing this for a different DFT program, so we've already kind of done this with GPOB, but um, it would be nice to maybe do this for a semi-empirical method and see how those compare to DFT based methods. Uh, and then for now, we're going to be starting by going over the basic tutorial and in particular, how to load in our DFT data and see if it looks right. So oftentimes when you do a DFT calculation, part of that will be a band structure calculation. Um, and you will see if your band structure calculation looks like that of the interpolation from Bootstrap 2. Um, we're using a simple system here so that we can just directly compare with their results and it won't be too long of a video. Um, but if you want a separate calculation or a video on how to do band structure calculations in Quantum Espresso, Bootstrap, or GPA, whatever code, we can, I could do that for you. Uh, but the idea is something like this. Okay, so here's our system. Let's look at this SIF file. I chose this SIF file because it's the one that they use in their tutorial. Um, and this is a LIZNSP. It's a small system. It allows us to do the calculations just on a laptop or something like that in a couple of minutes. And then we can compare our results. So here's how you would do those calculations using GPAW. I'm going to open the Python script. GPAW is a Python based DFT code, which is really surprisingly fast. You might hear that and think it's going to be slow, but it's typically much faster than Quantum Espresso and it's of comparable speed to something like that. Um, now, so we basically import our um, GPAW code and then the plane wave mode because we're going to be comparing to other typical plane wave codes like Quantum Espresso, VASP, CPTK, whatever. Uh, and then we import this ASEIO uh, so that we can read in this SIF file into an ASE Atoms object. So like this, um, the type of this object at this point is just going to be like um, ASE Atoms. And then what we can do is we can construct a GPOC calculator. We tell it we're going to use plane wave mode. It has different modes like linear combination of atomic orbitals finite difference, you might want to look into these if your system is really big. Um, we're going to pass it a 500 EV kinetic energy cutoff for the plane wave expansion. We're going to pass it our k-point mesh, and then we're going to pass it a system, uh, or rather a, a file to output our information to. So if you're using um, Quantum Espresso, you might do something like MPI run, and then you'd put in whatever your Quantum Espresso pwx executable is um, x dot scf dot in x dot scf dot out something like that um, and that's kind of like the equivalent of what we're doing here um, in this whole script so basically x dot scf dot out would be the equivalent of this text file <coughs> now uh, the next step then is going to be to 
assign this calculator that we just made to our atoms object. And then we're going to compute the potential energy. What this does is it does an SEF calculation for us. Then we save this SEF calculation into a GPW file. This is the key file format for using Bootstrap 2 with GPAW. So when you try to use G, uh, Bootstrap 2 with GPAW, it will look in your directory for a GPW file, and then it will try to get the relevant information from that, things like Fermi energy, number of electrons, the coordinates of your system, the cell, all that. Now, one thing is if you're dealing with a, maybe a bigger system, one thing to keep in mind, you always want to use a unit cell. Never use um, a non-unit cell for a bootstrap 2 calculation because the goal is to interpolate the band, uh, interpolate the energies at a given k-point, which is representative of the unit cell. So two things to keep in mind. Always use the unit cell and always use a uniform k-mesh. Do not pass a band structure calculation to bootstrap 2 because that would be like in red here and that's very difficult to interpolate say points you know over here because there are very few points um, in that region for the reference data so you want a mesh like in the green so we do that we save the calculation and then that's what we're dealing with uh, i'm not going to run it because it takes a minute or two uh, not long easily you can run it on a laptop but uh, I already have it, so there's no point in delaying the video. Um, I will remove this interpolation.bt2 file. And the idea is that now we can move on because we have the DFT data. So what we can do is we can ask Bootstrap 2 to do the interpolation for us. The one thing you want to change is where you're running the calculation. So in this case, data LIZ and SB is kind of where they have their DFT data. We have it in our current folder, so we just change that to dot. If you had it in your current folder plus, you know, my data, then you could do something like that. Um, but for us, it's just going to be dot. And this multiplier is also relevant. So this multiplier tells us for how many irreducible K points we have, which you can read from the output of whatever DFT code you're using, how many more in terms of a, a multiplicative factor is Bootstrap 2 going to generate for us? And this, if you think about it, kind of gives us an idea for how finely it's going to try and interpolate our data. So um, for us, we have a small system, relatively small multiplicative factor, and so it's no big deal runs very quickly um, and that's that's kind of the main approach for this now you can play with different multiplicative factors and so on you can also play with a, a number of different things so if you have a big system another thing you might want to consider is manually setting this emin and emax so these have to do with how many bands end up being included. And you can see this in the bandana uh, comment. So when you see bandana in here, um, it tells you which bands of your DFT data are included and which are not. So <clears throat> um, let me scroll over to their example here. So basically point 0.2 is the cutoff. So any band that is at some point within point 0.2 gets included, plus or minus point 0.2 gets included. So this blue band is just barely in at some point, and the pink band is uh, just barely in at some point. So these get included for the um, actual thermoelectric properties uh, calculations. You can also specify things like uh, you can manually specify how many irreducible k points and things like this, but they're really not necessary. So um, it's clear. Now we can plot our bands to see how they look compared to this system. Uh, I need to change my shell quickly. Um, and you can see almost immediately, right? They look really more or less identical. So. 
for us, they're pretty much identical. The only difference is that maybe we have a different number of bands included at certain points. Um, at some points, they're not separated here, and there seems to be a little bit of a rigid shift of our bands compared to the Bootstrap 2 reference data. But this kind of stuff is to be expected when you're using different DFT codes. And so we have relatively good agreement here. And so when you compute things like the onstage error coefficients later on, it won't be too much different. Um, but really what you want to compare this to is you want to compare this to your specific band structure calculation. So if you're computing, if you're using Quantum Espresso, that's going to be, you're going to run that with a bands calculation and plot it. If you're using GPA, again, I showed you how to just, uh, you could just type in GPA band structure. And there are a number of scripts that you can just download, which have pretty much exactly what you'd want. But nonetheless, that's kind of what we're looking at. Um, and so overall, this is the idea. So the overall idea is something like this. Use DFT code. Let's just open up a um, text file. Um, BIM text. So one, you want to use DFT code to get results on uniform K mesh. Two, um, run a bootstrap to interpolate choosing this uh, M factor to be accurate for your system. So if you have, if you run this on maybe like a two by two by two K mesh and you try and do dash M 15 or 16 or something like that, one common thing that you'll run into is, let me do a screenshot here. One common thing that you'll run into is your bands might start to look very kind of wiggly. So it might, this pink band might look something like this. Maybe not so extreme, but it might have a lot of kind of wiggles along the way. That's a sign that you might be over interpolating your data uh, because we're using a Fourier interpolation rate with Bootstrap 2. Um, and so you either need to reduce that dash M factor or you want to increase the number of points you're supplying to the Bootstrap 2 code. Um, and that's kind of the idea here. So this is how to get your data. And then, of course, uh, from, from here, right, uh, the steps are going to be do whatever uh, your goal is, which we'll kind of be covering in the next videos. But this step one and two here are the key steps. They're the most difficult steps. They're the things that most people kind of email about with problems in the bootstrap mailing list. And so this is what you want to get right. It's kind of boring. It's not the most fun, but these are the most important steps to get correct in order to have reliable data down the road. So in the next video, we'll talk about maybe the Fermi surface stuff, and we'll get into how you can compute thermoelectric properties for a given carrier concentration of holes and electrons, how to plot that data, and so on. Uh, but that's going to wrap it up for this video. So I will upload these scripts here. Um, as I promised, the Python script, I will upload the SIF. Uh, and I don't know how big this GPW file is. Um, it's only 14 megabytes, so I might upload this as well. And Again, if that's not up within a week or so, if anyone's watching this video right when it comes out, uh, drop a comment and I will uh, get that uploaded for you. But I hope that this video uh, is something you find helpful. Again, if you have anything you want to use this code for relevant to your particular set of research uh, objectives, drop that in the comments below and I will be sure to try and help you out with that in the future. So again, thanks for watching and I hope you have a good day.